So it's now my privilege to introduce Mr. Paul Hesloff, who is our guest speaker today. He was born and raised in Utah, where he grew up with six brothers and one sister, many of which he has worked over, worked with. Have you worked him over too? He's worked with them over the years. He and his high school sweetheart, Laura, got married and now reside in Farmington, Utah with their three young children. Throughout his life, Paul has always been very entrepreneurial and, and tried to build his own businesses. In between playing sports, Paul ran his own yard care company in high school, earning to save for college. Some of you can probably relate to that. In 2007, he owned and operated a cell phone store for T-Mobile, and upon exiting that, was in search for something new, and he found it. While a senior at Weber State University in 2008, Paul acquired Salt of the Earth from the founder, which was a neighbor of his, and he continues to run and operate the business today. Salt of the Earth manufactures body products for day spas and resort spas, uh, and in the past few years, he's taken what was a garage business to a new level, selling globally to top spas across the world, including Hong Kong, Italy, Mexico, England, Middle East, Australia, Canada, and more. So, will you please join me in giving a warm welcome to Mr. Paul Heslow. Alright, I'm going to see if I, can you guys hear me okay? Because I, I don't want to stand quite behind that all the time. So, um, thank you so much for having me. Um, I do have to give a shout out to my aunt and uncle, Jan and Kim Craig, and they work here, they're veterans here. They're amazing uh, <coughs> uncles, uh, family, um, so treat them good. Um, yeah, so a little, I, I want to talk to you guys today about a few things. I, I, I would hope, I'll just tell you a little bit about our story. I want to talk to you guys about uh, branding and marketing and hopefully um, how, you know, when you're starting out doing something, if you want to start doing something, if you want to do a little side business, um, I want to talk about some important principles that I believe attributed to the success that we've had um, throughout the past 10 years. I've been at it for in March, it'll be 10 years. So um, nothing, 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 nothing happens overnight. Uh, and we're still like, I, I, I don't know when or how I can define like making it. Uh, success is a very variable term, and so I'm going to talk a little bit about that as well. But um, yeah, my neighbor started this company um, I ride my bike to her garage and make salt scrub and soap in her house and in her garage. And I thought it was kind of a cool company because it was this home-based business that I worked at and I liked the lifestyle of that. Um, I, I, I kind of learned that very early on in my career that fringe, I mean, call them fringe benefits of entrepreneurship. Um, I had this yard care company and we would, uh, we just wanted to earn spending cash. That's what was our, our time motivation. We just wanted to earn spending cash in high school. So we would like go to companies that we liked to, like there's this chocolate factory, like Cameron's Chocolate, we go to their lawn, like the, our favorite pizza place in, in uh, we, all the high school kids would go to lunch, we, we'd mow the owners of the house, their lawn, and we can exchange for 25 bucks of pizza credit every week. So we had this tab roll at the pizza place that we could go. And so I kind of learned early on that like, always wasn't really about the money for me. It was about the fringe benefit, being in something that I could call my own and something that like had kind of like fringe benefits. As I kind of graduated and, and got into Salt of the Earth, and this is, this is a piece of advice that I would give anyone ever starting a business ever. Um, like we got into Salt of the Earth, I, didn't, I literally didn't know what a petty trip was. Yeah, I, didn't, I didn't know what the word meant. I, I never stepped foot in a day spa in my entire life. And this was our, these were our customers. Um, why I wanted to buy salt of the earth from, from my neighbor is because I, just, I knew I could work really, really hard. That's all I understood. That's all I knew. I could work harder than she was working. And so I, that's all I had to know. I didn't know anything about the industry. Or, um, so I got into it. But what I did find out and what I did realize early on is through other businesses, I needed to bank on something that I was really good at or perhaps be the best at. Even if even if being like one man band size at the time, I needed to go in there, I needed to figure out what even like on our small scale, like what could we be better at in the industry than any other person. Right? And so we're like, okay. And at the time we would like have answer every single phone call. Like I would, you know, I'm 
Uh, I'm forwarding all the calls to my cell phone, so when somebody calls on the East Coast at like 5.30 a.m., I'm like clearing my throat in my bed, like answering it's all here and I'm trying to help you. So I want to talk to every single customer, get to know what, what they like about us. And a lot of customers, they would like request a lot of stuff, and being naive, I would say yes to everything. I'd say, yeah, we can do that for you, we can take care of that for you. We can... And so we started doing a lot of customization for spas. Like we color their bath salts different for their pedicure service or their body treatment. And we started doing this custom thing. So I made a decision very early on, within the first like couple of years, that we were going to be the best company in the spa industry at customization. And so when we made the decision of that, what happens is like it helps you innovate. It helps like when you know you're good at something, when you know you're like maybe you're the like, and it always starts niche, right? So like if you're if you are very passionate about it's like ap apple juice. Okay? If, you, if you want to sell apple juice, you're not starving and competing with Treetop at Target and Walmart. You're starting and you're going to be like, I'm going to create, I'm going to sell to uh, restaurants in Ephraim, Utah, and I'm going to, I'm going to be the best at this. And then the niche grows and grows and grows and grows. And so for us, we're like, we want to be the best company at customization for this specific type of spa, and it's expanded beyond that. But with what started with customizing bath salts for spas turned into I, I started falling in love with design. I taught myself Illustrator. And I wanted to um, have a really professional image, and so I started designing stuff and getting better and better and better at that. And now we create these tools. It's like kind of like table side rock and roll meets like bath and body. It's called a blend bar, and we take it in the spas, have it in their location. And they literally custom mix product in front of their guests. They walk up, they smell the scent, they choose ingredients, and like it's made very creatively in front of them. Because understanding the base of what I wanted to do as a brand, like what we were good at, what we could bank on 100% of the time, was this custom thing. Now like, it's evolved, and like you know, seven, eight, nine years later, as this has evolved, like now we people come to us, and people are looking at us. And the reason you need to be good at something in my mind, or the best at something, is because People think of you, when somebody wants to change their spot menu into something custom, they think of us. Like, we, we're the first people they think of. And so, I'm going to show you a couple uh, videos that we have. This, this one uh, has just a little bit of taste about the brand shows, some of the custom things we do. We actually pulled minerals from the Great Salt Lake and we put them in all our products. Just a little tidbit about our brand. Uh, we heard that calisthenics is the fourth leading cause of relationships breakups. <laughs> so we, so we kind of, we, like for us, like we're a kind of young, fresh brand. We're not afraid. Like that's the thing. Is like we use our own voice. Like we're in this high-end skincare kind of fluffy clinical industry, but we're not afraid to be very transparent, use humor, and show the human side of our business. Which I'll show you guys a little bit more of. Um, we also heard that when Taylor Swift tries this, she'll write a breakup song about her old body cream. We know how much she loves those, those breakup songs. Um, 
So yeah, the brand, we, we actually pull minerals from the Great Salt Lake, we put them in all of our products. So we call it America's Dead Sea. It's really cool that we're in a bit trade show in like Dubai and it's like America's Dead Sea, the Great Salt Lake, like featured in these different like, parts of the world. Um, that's the one of our new station I was telling you guys about. It's like, kind of like the table side rock and one bath and body. And this is kind of what set us on the map. Um, put us into some of the top spas um, from Rich Crop and Four Seasons all over the world. And put us into some, some of the top places. Um, the thing that, that, that I've learned a lot about that I feel like um, is a very important principle is to, in so many companies now, like, You've got to like promote yourself. You've got to put yourself out there, and I feel like you you have to become your own media company. Okay, um, I think this is one of the most important things you could possibly. When you're starting your own brand. You've got to be able to produce your own assets or have a connection with someone who can help you produce those assets. So like four years ago, uh, that's my little brother Nick. He shoots all of our video. He shot all that stuff you guys see and edit it, everything. But we didn't start there. Like we didn't start with like we started with cell phones and GoPros and. You have to start, that's the point. So when you're starting out, um, Nick had this, because like, here's some camera, and here's like some software. Like, he was working in the warehouse, like making lotion and body scrub. And I was like, okay, just get good at this. So every week, to practice, and to show the humans out of our business, the brand, we want to show our warehouse out. I don't think I saw the warehouse, it's like made out of storage containers. We took an empty building and we put stacked storage containers inside them. Um, because we know that people, like when you're when you're doing like, you have such a quick, like when you're, the amount of time you have to someone's attention, is like you pull out a cell phone and this is how much time I have to capture their attention. So like the visuals are so important. So we built our facility for the digital image and video and picture and everything. That's why we built it the way we did. So it's built from these reclaimed storage containers. But um, back when Instagram was 15 second video only, we, we story told 15 seconds at a time and we wanted to show the humans out of our business, the transparency of the brand. And so we're like, we created these videos and we call them Farewell Fridays. And we, these videos were like saying farewell for the week, right? We just randomly named them that one day because it was happened to be on Friday when we shot it. And we just wanted to show, like, we're just people. Like, we'll robot on video, we'll lip sync, we'll dance, we'll make, our, we'll make fun of our people, we'll poke fun of them, we'll scare them. We just want to show that, um, you know, like, here's our office manager, here's our educator, and we want to show her personality as well. And so we've done these, as we've gotten better and better at this, um, we've evolved the concept. But we do a video every, every week, um, at least one video a week. Um, because the idea is like we want to have eyeballs. Okay? We want people to watch us. We want people to pay attention to us. Because when they're ready to buy, when they're ready to switch over, when they're ready, ready to purchase a new, you know, something new, like they think of us. Like it's not always about like selling them all day, every day, like shoving pedicure and manicure box down their throat on every post we do. Like we just want to show who we are. So we've become our own media company. Like we've, we've done it. Um, with just like a couple of people. And so like our photography, our videography, all the creatives, like all that has with just a couple of people. So to illustrate this, I'm gonna show you guys like a video we did where we used two flashlights. We had my wife's heel, her foot, and a song. And we wanted to show you this like pedicure like like handle that you like scrub your heel with to make it like really smooth. And rather than like we were launching this to our customers, rather than create a video like talking about it, we were like, let's just Great, Let's, we want to show the product off. And so this is the, this is the video we came up with. Two flashlights, uh, pitch black, and then my wife's seal. Turn my music high, 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 yeah.
So we, we did this video. Like, look, when you have a video that people like, like anyone can pay Facebook $200 to like get a lot of views on the video. That's like no engagement. Anyone can do that. You can take yourself on film a video, you get, you get 20,000 views right now. But if you pay for it and no one will like it, if you don't, you're not creative. So we take stuff that we like, that does well, performs work organically, maybe on my personal page, and we'll promote it. We, we spent $120 and had 12,500 views to spa directors, nail technicians, and spa owners. There are 12,500 people who have that job title on Facebook to saw that video. And because we knew uh, you know, it could perform well. So there's lots of tools. Now, all the tools are at your disposal to go and create a company and be successful with it. There's, there's a variable. You gotta be creative, you gotta have something that people want. Um, and in my mind, you have to be very passionate about it. Like I didn't know I'd be consulting spas on their, on their spa body treatment menu at this stage in my life. I, I had no clue. I, sometimes it's hard, like I get this question a lot. How do you know what you're passionate about? I don't know. You just have to go and start doing it. That's the thing about entrepreneurship. You can not You can plan, you can strategize, you can create business plans, you can do all this stuff. You just have to start doing stuff and you have to get somebody to give you a hundred bucks in exchange for something else you would really like to do. And then you figure out, okay, like, how am I going to do my model? How am I exchange this? What, am I, what else am I going to do? Um, we also, again, I talked about transparency. I talked about doing business. People do business with humans. Who's, who's seen Full House? You guys all seen Full House? Uh, so, you know, like, they have these, like, intros and they introduce some characters and stuff like that. So, sometimes when we have our team, this is, like, an older one, but we've done these a few times where we have our, we want to introduce our team, and so we kind of do it Full House style. Um, so this is the one we did, like, a year, a couple years ago. <laughs> We did another one, uh, I don't even know that one, it's a later one, when it's like Full House 2 or whatever, or launched on Netflix. And so during that same time, like that Full House, like just tried a lot of people's minds. Like, so that's when we reintroduced the staff too. Like we'll play on things that are happening in pop culture. And we'll show our staff, we'll show a product, we'll show how it relates to us. But we, we, we listen to the market, we listen to pop culture, we listen to what hashtags are trending, whatever. And we'll create content based upon that. Um, so I, I, I want to call it, I don't know if there's a better word, but like culture marketing is I think what I call it. Arguably for us, like our company culture has been one of the biggest sales tools that we could ever offer. So, um, you know, we, uh, by, by creating the culture we do, it's our number one recruiting tool. It's our number one tool to stay in front of our customers. It's our number one tool to um, want people, yeah, want people to be a part of our brand, whether they're a customer, whether they're a vendor, whether they're an investor. Like it's been our jam is showing our culture. Because people, I don't care what industry you're in, I don't care who you are, but it's it's, it's person to person. It's, if it's tech, if they agree with the company, they like the company, they want to be a part of the company in some way, we try to do that. Um, and so. Some of the people watching our videos are on like major spots globally, right? And we stay in front of them. 
I don't care how many followers, I don't care how many double taps you get on Instagram, none of that matters, okay? What matters is you're just consistently putting out content that gives value. Okay, we can make someone cry, we can make someone laugh, we can educate them. And if we give them enough value over and over and over and over and over again, maybe we can ask for a sell, or maybe we can actually um, sell them something when we want to promote a product. They're there, our audience is there. Um, this is uh, another kind of reference to show you. Like, you guys remember the United Airlines, like, drag, like, they drug the half plane? Okay? So that was happening, and the Jazz were in the playoffs. So we want to play off those two. And, we, and again, like, we want to, you can always our educator pilot. Take the jersey off. I'm not taking it off. We are tied 1 1 in the playoffs without Rudy Gobert right now. Take the jersey off. I don't even like the Jazz. Are you in this family? <laughs>
Is there anything that the best pedicure products in the spa market? Salt of the Earth has the best pedicure products in the marketplace. They feature customized experiences with their innovative blend boxes and blend bars. Visit www.saltofspa.com for more information. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll have a conversation with Missouri sometimes. That's obviously big. <laughs> we go back and forth a little bit. Um, but you can see in there, like, a culmination of, like, <clears throat> we want our business to be a place people want to be involved in, straight up. And, and that's how we built our company. And it's not social media, the right content, and creativity. It, it's people are not patient, okay? Because social media is definitely not, there's things that can, you know, get shared or like help or growth and some of that, but it's about consistency, it's about value, it's about getting value, like, Maybe on some of those cancer dancer videos we did, like maybe we, like we want to raise awareness for their GoFundMe page. Like we share a link and it gets lots of views and they share it. Like maybe it helped them, or maybe it may inspired someone else to do something good for someone else. And so the, the point of those is, you know, it's always not about business, but we want to have fun at work. So we want to show that, and it looks like a cool place to work, right? <laughs> Um, and, and so this is how we've done it, and it's, it's like social media is push-ups, okay? People want to take away weight sometimes in business and just pull up, okay? But it, social media and value and education, it's, it's push-ups. It's going to happen, it's going to help over time. It's not going to happen, it's just a lot, a lot of it every day is going to help. And that's what it's like. And, and so you have to be crazy patient. The, the, the advantage, you guys are going to school right now, okay? So you, there's an advantage you have. Like you are in school, you're going to start a career in something, you're going to start a business in something, and you have the opportunity to find and hone in and do something for, like while you can live cheap and you don't have like mortgages and kids, and maybe you do, but like you can just, you can actually start something and it takes so long, and just start doing. It evolves, like somebody start a business and like your, your business plan's here, and like where you're at is like over here. It evolves all the time. Nothing's perfect because you just like see opportunity, you tweak, you change. And that's what always happens. You guys remember what planking is? You guys remember that? It was like 2007 ish? 8 ish? 6 maybe? It's like way old. Like, totally was just like one of those like online sensations where people kind of, you go like flat and you like, I would like plank my body on the process thing and like take a picture of it. It was like huge for a while. And so, like for me, I, I call the power of planking because it's not about planking, but the principle of standing out. Okay, because like in, I'm in an industry where it's very small, even globally. A lot of people or like a lot of them are on Facebook and friends with a lot of them, and we want to just we just want to stand out. And like I'll go to these cool places, and so everywhere I go, rather than take a picture like in front of you know somewhere like cool place in the world, I I, I, I plank. Uh, and my goal was to bring planking back. Like I would have this hashtag. Um, and so I started doing this in different parts of the world. Like everywhere I go. Um, you know, and people are like, oh, Paul, where are we gonna plank? Like, you know, like Bourbon Street and <laughs> New Orleans and Seattle and you know, we have we have a lot of uh, people come to our facility, so you know, Times Square, I don't know what this guy's thinking right here. <laughs> but uh, you know, this is Italy and Sydney, Australia, Paris Airport. And this last one, I call it the power of thinking because you, you know, like people it, it's not it's like funny, like it's just interesting. Like I'm not again I'm not saying like buy spa products for me, buy lotion. Like here's the benefit of my thing. I'm just trying to stand out and like be kind of weird and just be myself straight up. Like if you're weird, be weird. If you're a geek, be a geek. Like just be you, straight up. That's my be authentic. And so with this, um, there's the this big trade show every year. It's put on by the International Spa Association, usually in Vegas. Um, and the chairman of the International Spa Association, for some reason, he got looped in. Like we became Facebook friends or mutual, and then like. He started, um, he started planking, and he's like, he would tag me and call me out, and then like, we'd tag the other people. Like, so within like, the industry, it kind of became like, a thing, like our little, our thing. And so he was passing through Utah for a big charity thing once. And I, the, the lady, she's on like, the Housewives of like, New York or New Jersey or something like that. And he was with her there doing this big charity thing, and they stopped in the office and planked. And 
in his keynote in front of thousands of spas at this big church over here, he he showed where he planked across any nights. He's like, Paul Hustle was all over the earth, challenged me to plank off, and I'd drawn it. And he like showed me how he like showed me up. He's like all over the world. <laughs> and the last picture in his keynote was this photo in my facility in Salt Lake, uh, planking with this Heather Tompkin Thompson from Real Housewives. And um, so the point is, like, I was just trying to like do something that was different. I wasn't trying to sell anybody anything. I was just trying to like use be me and, and embrace me and like the weird the quirkiness of whatever that is. And whatever that is for you, like, you just have to be yourself. In, in, in every way you possibly can. And so, um, it, it paid off for me. I think putting yourself out there, like when you do your own business, you have to raise money, you have to get people that you don't deserve or you can't afford to work for you to work for you. You have to, um, you know, get into a lease space that you can't afford, but you need to please give me a shot. Like when we did, to, to give you an example, I started like researching and design and I knew I really wanted like an amazing firm to like redo our sort of logo and like our and some of the base brochures and stuff like that for the pen. And when we were looking at all these firms, I like I couldn't settle on like just a random graphic artist or whatever. I was like, I need to find the best firm in Utah that I could possibly find who's and I specifically didn't want them to ever have done skincare or not the body because I didn't want them to have a box vision of something. So I, I worked with this, this company, and I was like, look, this is my vision for what I'm trying to do. This is what I'm trying to pull off. And I go, what's your budget? And I was like, uh, no, not, not much. Uh, and so I started telling, I was like, tell you what, like, this is what I want to do, this is what I would love for you guys to do for me. And I wasn't trying to just like, you know, gouge somebody, take advantage of somebody. I was just like being genuine. I was like, this is what I'm trying to pull off. So they're like, they'll take a flyer around, like, actually, we want to do this as a project. Like, it's not much money I have. Like, all right, we'll, we'll do these, like, five things for you. And I was talking to some other companies before, they're like, they made me your, your, your logo, and you're this and this. Like, how did you do that? Because, like, you know, it's like, it's like 25, 30 grand for a logo for this company. And just a logo. Um, but we, again, like, you have to, when I talk about putting yourself out there, I talk about selling. You gotta sell yourself. You have you don't have to be this like person who can go on a stage and like you can like just kill on video. Like I know there's very successful like recluses who are just like they do their thing and they have their value and so you maybe need somebody who can put himself up as a as a partner. But for me, like as I put myself out there, as I did these videos over and over again, I can't tell you how many opportunities that I've had because of them. Um, well, uh, there was a and just trying to be creative. So this same, I mentioned the ISPA, the International Spa Association. They did this, uh, they had this magazine, this like, it's called Pulse Magazine. And it's like, it goes out to like, the top thousands of spas, like it's readers, thousands and thousands of readership, the high, high end top spa in the industry. So they do the annual conference, and they have this monthly magazine that goes out. And they're like, design a cover of the magazine, and like, whatever you, you know, whatever you draw, whatever you design, whatever picture you take will be like the cover of the magazine. So I was like, okay. Like I had a photographer coming the next day when I found out of this to my facility to shoot. Like we cleaned it up nice and I'm like, I'm shooting stuff. I should wear a jacket today. Like and or like the next day. And so I wore the jacket and I was like, what am I gonna do? So you know, Pulse magazine was like I learned a lot from it and it was a foundation of success. Some some reason I'm not like a app rat, but I kept the Pulse magazine for like years. And my cover app was all lined up, just like all these magazines. So I said, my pitch to them was like, I laid down the foundation of Pulse magazines. I said, like, Pulse, the foundation of success. And this is, and you could write an article about me and how I started and how Pulse was the foundation of the success that I had. And so this was the, the, uh, the that was the cover of the magazine. Uh, and, and people didn't know, like, it was a contest, like, they just thought it was the cover of the magazine. And so it was cool because um, I, when, we, when I did that, that was a magazine they distributed at that trade show for that year. And at the same time, uh, they were looking, like this is totally separate. I think actually this was before they asked me. They had this like live auction every year. 
and this live auction where they like raise money for their foundation. They got, they like give away you know guitars signed by U2 and trips to Australia, all the Final Four tickets to raise a bunch of money for their foundation. And their auctioneer was uh, was gone. Like he was out of the country at the time. The regular like auctioneer guy who does it. And so they called me like, hey, you, you can you can you be the auctioneer? And I'm like, okay. Like, why, why are you asking? Why, why, we, we, we know, we watch your videos, we know you're afraid not to put yourself out there. We know you wouldn't be afraid of it. And like, that was very nerve wracking for me. It was, like, it was on the train to the floor, and then like, at the end of one of the days, like, all the people come to this stage, and you, you're like, you have an hour, and you have 10 items to sell. Um, so it was very hard, and I had to stretch myself to like, put myself in those shoes. And you're always having to stretch yourself, always. Always learning. And so I did that, it was the same year as this great show. And so like I had a 10 by 10 booth, paid for the smallest sponsor at the show, and I had arguably the best, biggest exposure, all for free at this trade show. I had a friend spent 100000 at that trade show. I spent like four grand. Um, and so as I, and then I, and then I actually bought um, 500 copies of that. <laughs> like me, you go see the no, like, I signed up, and I would jokingly, like I said, Top customers, potential customers, just cheesy, kind of like, you know, for Paul and like, and I sent it to other publications as well, with like a little sample. It's like I leveraged it like crazy. Um, and so by putting myself out there, it really, it, it's. I'm just telling you, there's so many opportunities that I have. There's a lot of exposure that we've got because of this. Um, how, how much time do I have? When the after is Wednesday. Okay, class. Um. We've tapped into influencers pretty well. So we have our facility. We wanted bloggers and influencers to talk about our product. So we made an event. We gave them a free product. We gave them a little hand treatment. We made a huge pinata that looked like one of our jars. And we called up, like, now that I have like, the top huge bloggers and all these people in Utah coming to my facility, because I created a lot of value and cool things around this event, um, I would call up Whole Foods, like, do you want to be the exclusive booth sponsor for this event? Like they had like chefs from Park City coming in, catering for creme brulee and making all this food out back for us that we didn't pay for. And then we had a top spot, it's like, this is who I have coming to my event, you guys want to be a part of this? And um, we're like, sure. So we had about three grand prizes inside our pinata, spaniata, spa pinata. And we did that in the parking lot.
can put whatever they want on it. And we created this little thing in, in January. And what we're doing, we're learning a lot. Okay, so like now I don't want to make this stuff. Like we're making them in our basement right now because we're waiting for a manufacturer in China to take over. And that's taking time, it's taking six months to get done. And that way we know that we validate the idea. We're excited about the idea. People are buying a product without us paying them to do that. And we, we have these, these boards that you know different sizes, we flat chop them, but the idea behind it is um, we uh, we're gonna outsource hundred percent of this business. Like salt is very hands-on. It's like, well, we're there every day, like we're well, making product, we have warehouse, we have facility, we have employees, but like this one, we have a little tenor in Salt Lake who's gonna take our product from China, who's gonna box it for us. When we get an order on Shopify, they'll be notified with the address through their API, and we won't we won't touch the product. We will see that order come through on our phone and be like, cool, we just sold a product. And that's that the dream, that's the dream when you're doing a business, especially a side hustle for us. And it's hard, like it, it took a long time to like, a lot of experiences and things, it was hard to get a product, it took a while to get the product mailed right, it's simple, but it's still hard to do. So we started this side hustle, then maybe, it's, maybe it turns into more, maybe it's just a cool thing we gotta get to do together. So that one's Jeff made, on Instagram, at Jeff made. My Instagram is Salt Spa, uh, if you guys wanna check that out, whenever. Um, and there's my contact info. If you guys want to uh, shoot me an email or anything like that, or hit us up, we're, we're right there. So, we have a couple of minutes that wanted to open up. Is there any questions about anything from anybody? Okay. I'll be hanging around for a second if anybody has questions that I want to ask in front of anybody else. We'll tell me kind of about that. So, thank you guys for your attention, for your time, and uh, good luck.